Good morning. Hello. Happy Sunday. Good morning, ladies. Very, very nice. Guys, I have some really bad news. It's snowing again. We're supposed to get another eight inches by Wednesday. I'm so done. Which is part of the reason why I have Maui fever so badly right now because there's nothing I would want more than to go be in the sun. <laughs> I need some sun, some sand, some palm trees, um, which is what my whole bingo event that's coming up is all about. Have you guys seen my bingo? I'm doing, um, I'm actually doing three bingos. So I'm doing a bingo while I'm at on stage in April. And um, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be Maui themed. And so what I decided to do was take you all on a trip to Maui. Um, and basically, uh, we are going to see a lot of sights along the way to Maui. And we may even encounter some wild animals. You know, um, it's just I don't want to give too much away. But it's a, it's a trip to Maui. And it's going to be full of fun and surprises along the way. We're going to play six rounds of bingo, make six fabulous prizes. I mean, six fabulous projects. Yes, we're going to have six fabulous prizes as well. Door prizes, snacks, and we're just going to bring the heat. We're going to bring the sunshine and just have a blast. I'm so excited for it, you guys. It's going to be so much fun. And so there are three different times I'm going to be doing this bingo. One is in on stage at Salt Lake City. Um, April 12th, April 11th, I believe. I don't know, the Friday that we're over there. <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna be doing a local one here at my house. For those of you that can't come to Salt Lake City with me, I'll be doing that on March 30th at my home. And then um, if you unfortunately don't live close enough to me, um, you can play online with me. I do a live Facebook Live bingo. I invite you to a private Facebook group. We play the six rounds of bingo together, um, and then we make the projects, or I, I do a demonstration of the projects. You can make them with me, or you can um, make them later and refer back to the video. I leave the video up for about three months. Um, and yeah, and then I, I mail the prizes to you. The kits get shipped to you by the 25th of March, and I'm doing the Facebook Live bingo on um, Sunday the 31st of March. All right, you guys, here is my February rewards quote. I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have seen it before, know what it is. Um, I have a beautiful, this beautiful ribbon. I've already ordered it. It's coming. And um, yeah, if you place an order with me during the month of February and it's $50, you get my spool of ribbon for free. And you have to use this host code. That is the key. Um, and if you spend $30 before Friday, you get my make and takes for free. So $30 gets make and takes, $50 gets make and takes and the spool of ribbon. So here are today's projects. I did 3D this week and I just couldn't help myself um, because they were just adorable and they just spoke to me. So I'll kind of talk about them a little bit and uh, then we'll get to crafting. So these are, could be yours. I could cut and prep and make all these for you and send them directly to you with a $30 order on my online store using this code. So very exciting, you have till Friday to do that. So as you guys can see, I showed you a little bit of my chocolate tea. Isn't this adorable? This is one of QB's um, designs for the Hershey Kisses. Um, and I chose purple because I think this would be a fabulous gift for my mom and her favorite color is purple. So I made this with her in mind. So I'll show you guys how I made that. It's so fun. And then this is a tea holder. As you can see, it holds tea. And there's a little um, lid here and it holds three packets of tea just perfectly. So, and then I just tuck the lid underneath my little cup of tea here and then I put my ribbon around the top. So super, super cute. I absolutely love the polka dots. I'm a polka dot fan. I love polka dots. And then this little gorgeous thing here is my little mini, it looks, reminds me of a little tea party. Little mini cards, aren't those adorable? And I made a whole box of them. So I have the box here and I made a little cup 
another little cup, and another teapot. So you could make a whole set of these cards. Aren't those adorable? And then you can see here, I even showed you my box fits chocolates. You could wrap some chocolates. Those are just Hershey nuggets and you can fit all the cards inside. But then I was, I was thinking that these handles would be perfect to tie the ribbon through and make like a little card that you can attach to um, a gift bag or a present that you've wrapped. So you can just wrap it around and loop this through. I'll do it on the side. Loop it through the little handle and it's just perfect. And then you can tie your bow. So, so cute. So anyways, I thought this was super, super adorable. And I'm gonna show you guys how to make all three of those. What do you guys say? Do you love it? Okay, and I do love the tea set bundle, I'm telling you. So we're using Tea Together, which is in the Occasions catalog. Um, it's a stamp set, it's a clean stamp set, and it's available through Mar or May 31st. It's perfect for Mother's Day. It has a beautiful little Happy Mother's Day, and this sentiment is so sweet. It says, our love is one that covers years through life's joys and sometimes tears, a bond that stands the test of time, mother and daughter, hearts entwined. So this is great for moms to daughters, daughters to moms, a very, very special treat. So of course you're gonna want this for Mother's Day, right? Well, then there's these fabulous framelits that coordinate with them. These are the tea, tea time framelits. And these are only available through March 31st and free with a $100 purchase during celebration. So you're definitely going to want to get these framelits before Mother's Day because obviously they won't be available after March 31st because they want them to go with this beautiful tea set. So definitely want to get these, have that on your list uh, before March 31st or before they sell out because everything in the celebration seems to be selling out, all those popular things. All right, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna start with my cute little tea bag and then we'll go on to the other projects here. This one's probably the most simple and I like to start with simple. Get warmed up with the simple project, then we'll get into the complicated ones. All the measurements for these projects can be found on my blog post. Uh, I linked it in the description of my video and you can um, find it there, okay? So I have this piece of Melon Mambo and let's just talk about measurements real quick. I know they're on my blog post, but it is eight and five eighths by two and seven eighths. No, two and five eighths. Eight and five eighths by two and five eighths. Okay. And it is scored at two and three quarters, three and a half, six and a half, and seven and a quarter. And then I rounded the edges here at the top. So in, in, when we're finished, it's going to curl up like this. Okay, then I have these two pieces of crumb cake. They're two and seven eighths by three inches. And on the three inch side, I scored at half inch intervals all the way along. And I'm just going to fold them now in a zigzag pattern and use my bone folder to burnish those edges really well. And thank you to those that are sharing. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I will enter you in to win my stamp set next week. So again, I'm gonna do that zigzag thing, accordion style fold with the second piece. So you need two pieces of that crumb cake at three and two by seven eighths and score that at one or half inch all the way across. Okay, so now we are going to adhere them. I'm going to use tear and tape because it's quicker, but I'm gonna put tear and tape on the end here, not tear and tape. Fast views. I say what I, I say the wrong things all the time. Okay, so in this center panel here, we're going to glue this down and you just wanna make sure that it's lined up with the edge as best you can. Hi Suzette, thank you for joining us live. That's fabulous. Her first time zigzag thing. <laughs> Cindy, I can always depend on you to make fun of my words. Okay, so I've got this here and we're going to just kind of tuck it down and line it up with this edge here. 
Now, if you're using liquid glue, you would have to hold on to it a little bit longer, but you also would have a little bit more wiggle room. So it's whatever you prefer. So I'm gonna put another little line of adhesive on these two ends. Okay. And we're going to do the exact same thing on this side. It's a little bit more tricky now though because the lid's kind of closed. Okay, and then got the top part here. So you can see I'm just more concerned about it staying within the inside of the Melon Mambo. There we go. And voila, you have this beautiful little accordion fold here, little pouch. And like I said, it fits these tea bags. Just perfect, nice and snug in between each of the accordion folds, like so. Isn't that cute? Okay. And then I have a piece. This is the Botanical Butterfly Designer Series paper. It's free with the $50 purchase during celebration and it has these beautiful polka dots and obviously I did not cut this down to size goodness sakes so if it's two and if it's three that's weird oh it's two two and a half two and a half and then the top is goodness two and seven eighths Okay, I had that mixed up. So two and a half by two and seven eighths, and we're going to glue that down here. It can't be two and seven eighths. It's gotta be two and a three quarters. Heck if I know. So two, two and a half by two and three quarters, okay? Now that we've figured that out. And we're just going to put some glue. And this time I'm using Tombow because when I glue these big panels down, I need a little bit of wiggle room so I can get them centered like so, okay? And then I have another piece, God, it's probably cut the wrong size too, yes it is, that needs to be two and a half. <laughs> and the corner needs to be rounded. Oh goodness. So cut it at two and a half, now I need to round this corner again. Okay, did I make it too wide? Nope, that's perfect. So, two and a half by one and a quarter. Two and a half by one and a quarter. I'm gonna glue this down. This tea holder is so cute, you guys, and it's really quick, actually. And I love the pink, the bright pink. It's very cute. Okay, so there's that. All right. So now it's time for the stamping. So I have a piece of Melon Mambo cardstock that we're gonna stamp the cup of tea on, and then I have a scrap piece of Whisper White that we'll stamp the sentiment on. So let's go ahead and get, love is a cup of warm tea, or no, no. Love is a warm cup of tea. <laughs> Had that a little bit mixed up. And we're gonna do that in Melon Mambo. And then we have our teacup. Love this teacup. Uh, by the way, you guys, when, as soon as I saw this teapot and this teacup, I thought of Mrs. Potts and Chip from Beauty and the Beast, which is absolutely one of my most favorite um, movies of all times, my Disney movie. If I could be a Disney princess, I would be Belle from Beauty and the Beast. And I could pretty much recite the entire movie to you at so many times I watched it as a kid. And I absolutely love it. So, and I saw somebody make um, on Facebook, they did uh, Chip and Mrs. Potts from the tea. Oh, what is the punch that I used to round the corner? I'm sorry, I did that so quick. It is called the Detail Trio Punch and it does three different punches. Can we take a little detour guys and show her what it does? So one side is a corner rounder. The other side is a detailed corner punch, okay? 
And then the third one is a hole that's punched for like tags or ribbon. So this goes straight, like a straight line, and it does a little, little kind of oval punch. So it has all three different kinds. And um, yeah, it's called the Detailed Trio Punch. It's pretty awesome, I use it all the time. And welcome Diane. Diane is uh, my newest team member. She bought the starter kit from me because it was just too good of a deal to turn down. So I'm very excited to have her on the Pretty Little Stampers team. She is awesome. And I found out that she's an author, a published author. So I'm very, very excited to read her books and super happy to have her on my team. So, all right, so I've stamped my tea cup and I've stamped my sentiment. Now I have another little punch that I'm going to use after I close my ink pad. I've got a lot of stuff going on here on this, on this mat here. <laughs> Put that away. Um, where was I at? Oh yes. Yeah. okay, so I have another little punch as I'm putting everything away. Another little punch here. This is the scallop circle. It's one and an eighth. And I am just going to center that in my punch. And it's the perfect size for my sentiment. Whoop. And then we'll put that on top of our cup after we cut it out. And then those of you that are new, this little gadget I'm using is a chamois. And it is awesome, and I love that little squeaky sound it makes, and it cleans your stamp so, so well. So, chamois are amazing, and they fit perfectly in one of our clear stamp cases. You see, this is how I store mine in a little case. I get it wet, just a little bit damp, and it cleans my stamps. And the ink doesn't transfer onto your hands. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so. Now that we've done all that, let's bring the big shot into view and we will cut out our beautiful little cup here, our little teacup. And I love that this framelit cuts out the teapot, the cups, and these beautiful roses. I mean, it cuts out everything and the petals. It's such a pretty set. And like I told you, when I was starting to play with this, I just had all these ideas in my head. I just wanted to make everything. I love it. And I'm not really like a big tea person, you know, like, but the, <laughs> these were so adorable. I just, my little teacups and my coffee or my teapots, um, when I cut them out and was taking pictures of them, it looked like I was setting up for a little tea party. It was absolutely adorable. So as you can see, I just lined up the framelit on my Big Shot and I'm cutting out my little teapot. I mean, my little cup, cute. Okay, that's it for this this uh, holder, you guys. Literally so fast, so easy. Okay, so now we're going to, I just put this on with the dimensional. I, put, I started putting my dimensionals in here because it was getting to be a hot mess on my desk. <laughs> I love those clear cases. Okay, so we'll put a dimensional on the back of our frame, our scallop circle here. Okay. And I'm trying to read your guys' um, conversation. Hopefully I'm not missing any questions. That was a great question from Diane earlier. And if you ever have questions, I will be happy to stop and help and answer as much as I can. Hi, Marie. What's Marie saying? Marie says, going down the road in our RV and have to watch your Facebook Live. Yay, Marie, thank you. Just getting some more framelits here because I, not too high, I wanna put framelits here, framelits, oh my gosh, dimensionals, and I don't wanna put any up here because I'm gonna put my lid underneath and I want it to kind of hold it. So if I put dimensionals up too high, I'm gonna leave these out for later. If I put dimensionals up too high, then I won't be able to get that lid underneath. So I'm just peeling the backing off of these guys. And then, Oh, what a cute idea, Janie. It could be an invitation for tea. That's a great, I, this could be a little invitation. Oh, for a tea party. Okay, so then I'm just going to glue this down. And you can see that I have it so that the lid just slides right under. And then I took my ribbon. So you could do this a couple of ways. You could have it where it's Velcroed 
um, or magnetized, or just like this is fine. And then I just took some ribbon. This is that polka dot tool ribbon. I absolutely adore it. Clear cases are the most wonderful thing for storage, right? Hi, Lisa. Welcome and thank you for watching live. That's awesome. Sorry you've been missing me. I miss your face. <laughs> I knew what you meant. Hot, right? All right, so there we go. So then we've tied our little bow and we'll cut off the ribbon. And then you have this cute little cut, little package of tea. Oh my gosh. So this tea holder is not my idea. I found it on Pinterest a long time ago and I pinned it. And when I had seen this set, I knew that I wanted to make this tea holder with this set. So I was excited that I had that opportunity. It was very exciting and a fun little, little holder. So there's project number one. Let's go ahead and move on to our little teacup. What do you guys think? Let's do our little teacup. So I'm gonna put these, I'm gonna leave this on a block because I'm gonna need it, but I'm gonna put this away. Oh my gosh, look at the hearts, yay! You guys love it, woohoo! Thank you. All right, so we're gonna need our little flower, this beautiful flower, is so pretty. So we'll put that on there so we have it ready to go. All right, so here's how we make this. Again, this is not my design, this is QB's design. She does amazing Hershey um, Kiss tutorials, and I have linked her original blog um, on my blog, okay? So if you wanna go see hers, you can. Um, and here are the pieces that we're going to need, okay? And Lord help me, I'm gonna need my ruler again because I can't remember all these measurements. So the first thing that we're gonna start with is this piece here. We'll set these aside for now, okay? So you're going to need a piece that's one inch by nine inches, and it's scored at two inches, five and a quarter, seven and a quarter, and eight and three eighths, okay? And we are going to fold at all of the score lines, like so. And then we're going to put adhesive on this small little one, small little piece here. Now you could do tearing tape or you could do liquid glue, but you need a strong adhesive to keep this puppy together. Now I'm just going to hold this here for a second and you can see this is forming the teacup itself. Oh, and I forgot a step, of course. It is so cute, right Deborah? Totally not my idea. This is totally QB's idea, but it is very cute. Okay, so I forgot a step. I forgot to round this part of it to kind of give it that teacup shape, but it looks like I was able to do it even after the fact. So you can see kind of turned into kind of a cupcake shape. <laughs> All right, so then the next step is this little handle here, and this is going to be one inch by six inches, and it's scored at two, two, four and a quarter, and four and a half, okay? Now, this one again, we're going to fold at the score lines, but you're gonna do it, you're gonna fold in, fold out, and fold out. So it looks like this, okay? Now, on this side, this side is going to be the handle, so we want it to curl outward. So we're going to use our bone folder and just curl this piece. And mine is not course not working very well but hey okay so we've got our curl and then um, this piece is a little bit tricky but I think I'm going to use my handy dandy tool here if you have a skewer or something that's going to help you curl this paper you can you can use that and I tried to find a dowel and I didn't have one or a little skewer so I just used what I had which was this little piercer just to get the edges started. Oh yeah, that was the other thing that helped me, is I curled this to kind of get the paper looser so it would curl, and then I curled it up. Bad. Okay, so you've got this little spiral going. 
and then you stop at that score line because that is where we're gonna put adhesive. So first let's put adhesive here on this straight edge here, this big piece. A toothpick would work fabulous as well. Good idea. Okay, so we're gonna put that here and that just glues to the side as you can see here. And I'm just gonna hold this here, make sure the glue's dried really well. Okay, I'm gonna put this away before I stab myself. And then we're going to put adhesive on this skinny piece here that we folded, this little score line here in between the two. And then we're going to put it about halfway up the side. And we have to hold it there. And it really depends on you and how big you want your handle. If you have it too close to the bottom, then you can't really see the curl. See, my first one was pretty low and I didn't like that because then it looked, it was hard to tell it was a little handle, but this is a good spot, okay? So there you go. So now you've got the kind of outside of your cup, okay? Now you need two strips that are one inch. This one is one inch by 11 inches and it's scored at every one inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you'll need another piece that's one inch by seven inches and it's scored at one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so the first one, you're going to fold over, fold over, fold under, fold on. So you see how I'm doing this zigzag? So two one way, one the other way, and two the other way. Two, so it's every two, you're gonna switch direction, okay? So two and two. And you just wanna make sure those are nice and burnished. You can use your bone folder if you need to. I'm just making sure that they're folded nice. So that when you collect them together, they're gonna look like this. Okay, and then you're gonna stick this in your teacup and it's gonna fit in the top just perfectly. Okay, and then we have the same thing with our bottom one. We're gonna fold down, fold down, fold up, fold up, fold down, fold down. Okay, so that we form another section and we're gonna slide this in at the bottom of our teacup like so. Okay, so now we have all of these sections to put our Hershey Kisses. And so, I'll get out my little Hershey Kisses. We need seven, so three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and what I have found is, one, I don't want these little um, papers to show, so I've kind of put them down at the top, and you need to hold your Hershey Kiss like this and you need to put in the the top part first and then slide in the bottom. So the top part is this pointy part of the Hershey Kiss. So you're going to kind of hold it like so and push in the top and slide in the bottom. And you're going to wanna do one direction first and then go back and do the other direction. So you've got the three at the top We'll do three, two at the bottom, and then we'll switch direction and fit the rest in, okay? So there we've kind of got that started. Let's go ahead and put a Hershey Kiss in right here. And one right here. Oh, did I miss count? I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, we need eight. I miscounted. Okay, so then our last one will fit right in there. Look at that. Oh, if anybody ever wants to give me tea, this is the kind of tea I want, chocolate, okay? I want chocolate tea. <laughs> this looks so delicious and scrum diddly umptious. <laughs> All right, so the next pieces to the bottom of our teacup are the um, largest circle. So this is the largest circle in the circle framelit. Cindy, stop laughing at me. <laughs> the largest circle in the layering circle framelits. And then we need the fifth largest circle. So we're gonna do it layered like this. So largest circle, then our doily, fifth largest circle. And then this is another piece of that butterfly designer series paper, the botanical butterfly, free with a $50 purchase. 
This is the fourth smallest circle here, and it's going to be layered right on top of our other circle. So we're gonna glue all of these down, and it makes a cute little glue cup, or glue cup, makes a cute little teacup saucer. <sighs> Today is gonna to be the day I cannot talk, you guys. I am so sorry. It's that tea, it energized me better than the coffee could. So I'm just doing like a nice thin line of liquid Tombow glue on my doily. I love these pearlized doilies. Make sure you go into my raffle to win a package of these doilies. They're beautiful. You need these in your arsenal at all times. You never know when you're gonna need a doily. Okay, then this is our fifth largest circle. We're gonna put that down in the center. And then, a designer series paper. You do a tea party at Christmas? Oh my gosh, these would be perfect as little um, party favors. Oh my gosh, how fun is that? Okay, so once you've got your little saucer made, you can put some adhesive on the bottom of your teacup. And then we're going to center it as best we can and sit and just let it dry. Okay, we're gonna set that aside as it dries and we're going to stamp our flower and we're going to stamp our sentiment. So we're going to be coloring our flower um, with our blender pen. So I'm stamping in gorgeous grape, gorgeous grape ink on my piece of um, Whisper White cardstock and I'm just stamping the sentiment here. Love is a warm cup of tea, okay? And then we're going to stamp our beautiful flower here on another scrap of paper. And then, see my little palette of paint there, I call it? <laughs> I squished my lid, I'll actually show you. I squished my lid when it was closed like this so that the ink pad touches the inside of the lid, which gives me a little thing of color here. And then I use my blender pens. These are called blender pens. There's a set of three. They're actually on back order right now. Uh, <laughs> and it just picks up the color. It has a special chemical in it that it picks up the color of the ink and allows you to color with it. So you can actually color your flower. with the ink. And this is great because it can be any color of ink that you want it to be. So I always think of it as the best way to buy it, to like use as markers because one of these pens can be any color. It can be any color marker you need. As long as you own that ink pad color, it can color with it. So you just need to keep picking up color And I tried to do the center of my flower a little bit darker than the outside. I'm just blending it a little bit. Nothing works as good as our blender, our blends markers, but we don't have gorgeous, great blends markers. And I am coloring this too much and now the paper's starting to fray a little bit, but there you go, you have your beautiful flower. Now to get the ink out of your blender pen, you just scribble on a scrap of paper until it goes clean. See that? Now it's clean and ready to use again on a different color. So these are absolutely amazing. Love blender pens and you must have a set. I tell you what, you need it. And then I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use my um, blend markers for the green. I want a green petal so I'm using Old Olive and I'm just going to color the little Leaves in, like so. Are there any questions? I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anyone's questions or comments. So there is our beautiful little flower, okay? Now, let's go ahead and get our pretty little framelit for this flower which is this little guy here. It cuts it out and we'll run that through the big shot real quick. We are all in awe. <laughs> wow, Marie, that's crazy and super awesome. 
How fun, 40 people to your tea party, that's amazing. Okay, just lining that up. I'm cutting it out real quick. Did my framelit shift on me? It did a little bit, didn't it? Always happens when I'm live on Facebook. Okay. You do not glue the inside strips, no. And it is very sturdy. You saw I had turned it sideways and everything. And I'll show you, I did not put a single lick of glue on the inside. They fit nice and snug inside. See, they don't go anywhere. So you do not need to glue it. Okay, so let me put my little framelit away. And I'm going to just cut myself a little dovetail at the end of my sentiment here. So the way I do that is I just cut up the center and then go from the outside to that center point. It's not gonna be as even as if you were gonna use the triple banner punch, but it's quick. Okay, so I'm gonna put, I'm actually gonna cut this down a little bit. I feel like it's a little bit long. There we go. I'm gonna put adhesive on the back of this. Uh-oh, this one's about to go in the garbage. Okay, and we're just going to stick this here at the top. I like to leave the little flap unglued because I'd like it to kind of curl up a little bit, excuse me, curl up a little bit and uh, look like it's kind of free. And then dimensional <clears throat> on the back of our flower. And voila, cute. Look how adorable this cute little teacup is, you guys, and how quick it is. You could make a bunch of these in, a, in like an hour if you did like an assembly line. So, so cute. Perfect for Mother's Day, perfect for a cute little tea party, perfect for Marie's Christmas tea party, that's for sure. Absolutely love this. So very, very fun, cute little project. Hope you guys will be making a bunch of those because it's a darling, darling thing. Okay, oh, look at the hearts, yay. Okay, great. I'm glad you guys like it. Thank you. All right. So let's go ahead and clean these off and let's do our last project here. This is our box. We're going to make the box and we're going to make the cards. Okay, so we have four cards to make and our adorable box. Absolutely so cute. Did you guys, if anybody got on late and you missed it, here are our four little cards. They open from the top. I'm gonna show you, have you guys ever made cards like this with the, the shape of the stamp? So I'm gonna show you how easy that is using those wonderful framelits. Look at, happy Mother's Day, so cute. You have a little set of tea party note cards. This would be so cute for party favors, for little tags for gifts, um, so super, super cute. And I just wanna show you, you could also fill your box with some chocolates. If you wrap some paper around the chocolates, you can fit them in the box as well. All right, so. What we need for that is we have a piece of, this is um, Coastal Cabana, and it is five and a half by five and a half. And we have another piece. This is the All My Love Designer Series paper, and it's also five and a half by five and a half. It's gonna be the top part. And then we have these pieces of Flirty Flamingo and Coastal Cabana. Okay, and I don't know why I have this one or this one. Oh, I think I have them for, okay. So you can see that I have them folded over and that is because we're going to cut them out with the framelits um, and make cards out of them. So you'll need a piece of um, Coastal Cabana. It has to be the length of the framelit or a little bit more so that you can cut out the entire shape, but you can see it folded over, it fits. And we're just going to cut, um, I'll show you, but we're gonna cut so that we don't cut off this fold, if that makes any sense, okay? I'll show you that in a minute here. Um, the first thing that we need to do is, I have two pieces. This is the um, How Sweet It Is designer series paper, and I love this polka dot. I'm into polka dots, I guess. So I have two pieces of that. We're gonna stamp our teapot and our teacup. 
And then I have another piece of the All My Love Designer Series paper, and we're gonna stamp our teapot and our teacup in this one. So let's go ahead and do the stamping first, and then we will do all of the framelit work, because there's quite a bit of framelit work in this one. So let's get all of our stamps out. We're gonna need our beautiful little teapot. I'm gonna just put this on a big block here. Okay, and we need our teacup. And we need our big rose. I already have the little rose on a, on a um, block. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our stays on ink out. And make sure I don't stamp these because I don't want these ones stamped. All right, so here we go. Um, for the designer series paper, we're gonna stamp a teapot and a teacup in each. Okay, so we've got our teapot, like so. Isn't that cute? I love the polka dots, so pretty. Okay, and I'm gonna do this one right here. So pretty, okay? And then we're gonna do the teacup. Hi, Heather. Okay, hi, Mom. See my mom's watching and hi Jamie thank you guys for watching wow 37 viewers that's awesome okay so we've got our teapot and our teacup stamped twice in the designer series paper now I want to stamp the flowers and I'm going to use memento ink for that because I'm going to color my flowers a little bit just to add some dimension to them. And so since I'm gonna be coloring with, with the blends marker, I wanna make sure I'm using Memento. Hi, Sharon. All right, so I'm just cleaning these off because I use Stazon, you either need to clean them off right away or use Stazon cleaner or both. <laughs> but Stazon will stain your stamps if you don't clean, off, clean them off right away. Okay, so let's go ahead and for these flowers, ah, oh, that's why I had these scraps. So I'm gonna stamp two of the small flowers and two of the big flowers, one in each color. So we've got a big flower in Coastal Cabana and a big flower in pink, Flirty Flamingo, and a small flower in Flirty Flamingo, and a small flower in Coastal Cabana. Okay. And I'm gonna clean those off real quick. And then we'll color these beautiful flowers. All right, so the colors that I chose, I don't need this one, but the colors I chose are Flirty Flamingo and Pool Party. Um, we don't have Coastal Cabana in um, our blends markers, but Pool Party worked just fine. And all I'm trying to do is just add some detail. So I'm like coloring the centers so that they look a little bit darker, just maybe outlining the flower, just to make it pop out a little bit. And when it dries, it dries pretty light. You may not even notice it. And then for the rose, what I like to do is just kind of color where I think there'd be shade, which is around the petals. So the petals are putting shade on the petals behind it, kind of a thing. So that's kind of my process with roses. So I'm just quickly just shading around the flower. Okay. And then with the pink, I'm, I'm going to start with light and see if I need to go darker, but we're just going to go lightly around shading. Like so. And that was really, really light. So I think I'm gonna even go darker and do a little bit darker. There we go. Yeah, I like the dark better. And you can see that's all I'm doing. I'm just shading because the, the, the flower's already pink. But this just kind of adds a little bit more detail to that flower.
and I'm just kind of blending the dark into the light. Okay, and then for the leaves, I used, where's Gra Granny Apple Green? Did I lose my Granny Apple Green? Okay, we'll use Old Olive. Light Old Olive should do. So we're gonna just color the leaves real quick. I liked the way the leaves looked with the Granny Apple Green, but I can't find that marker at the moment. That's okay. Old Olive will do. And then we'll cut these guys out and put it all together. You'll see how adorable it is. <clears throat> it is, Janie, it is so adorable. And remember that you can get all of the pieces and parts for this project by placing an order on my online store this week. You have until Friday, and I will prep the make and takes for you. You'll get them shipped to you for free. So that's another fun way to keep that creativity going all week. All right, so let's go ahead and get our big shot into view here. And we'll cut all these pieces because there's quite a few pieces to cut. Okay. So here we go. Let's see, what should we cut first? Let's cut these two guys out first. Let's cut our teapot and our teacups. So we'll just line those up. It's Sunday, Granny is sleeping in. <laughs> All right, Sunday is a great day to sleep in. But I chose it to do my Facebook Live, so there's no such thing as sleeping in anymore for me. <laughs> I'm up at five getting ready. Okay, so, make a Stella too. Oh, for the flowers, yeah, that's a great idea for the flowers, that'd be cute. Okay, so there's one set of, of teapot and cup. And just remember, and I keep forgetting, but just remember to push out these little pieces here because then they will get packed with paper and they won't cut as well. So just make, make sure you pop those out because you want it to cut out those handles just perfectly. So we'll just put these on again. Thank you, Teresa, for sharing. I have entered you into the drawing for our well-adorned stamp set. Everybody that shares is entered to win that beautiful new stamp set. I can't wait to play with it with the um, Stamparatus. I am excited. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for watching. All right. So then we've got these two little teapot and teacups cut out. Again, we'll just poke out those centers, making sure that... They are clean and clear. Okay, now let's do our flowers since we've got that done. Flower time. These beautiful flowers. And I guess we could only do one set at a time, but hi, Vicki. Thank you for watching. Okay, so we've got those guys here. We'll move this one off and run this through. Thank you, Deborah. You're very sweet. That's nice of you to say. And I appreciate all of you. Oh, darn it. Hurt my flower. See, it never fails. Okay, and then we'll cut this one. And this one. And we're going to run it through. Seems like the little ones want to shift a lot more than the big ones, huh? So what it looks like it's doing to me. Okay. So we'll put that over there. And for this one, I'm going to try and salvage it just by trimming off around 
the part that didn't get cut off and call it good rather than have you guys sit and watch me do this all over again. Yeah, it's all right. It's kind of deformed, but it, it'll do. <laughs> okay, so, oh, I forgot the important part. Darn it, okay, just kidding. We'll bring our big shot back in. Let me show you how we make these little, little cards, okay? So I have one of my pieces of cardstock. It's scored in half and folded over. These little ones will be for our teacups, okay? And all you're going to do is just make sure this top part of the teacup is over that score line, that folded over side. You do not want it to um, be there. And because it's trying to pop up on me, I'm gonna use washi tape to hold it down because I did not want to have to do this again. Okay, so I'm just gonna get a little piece of tearing tape and hold this down while it cuts. Ugh, it's popping up. Don't pop up. Okay, I'm gonna do it sideways so I can, I'm just gonna tape it down like that. There we go. Okay, let's run that through. hopefully show you okay so you can see it's clutched out these little things and then it opens just like that see how cool is that so we'll just do that a couple more times we need to do it for our pink little teacup And that one is staying down for some reason. Oh, I say that and it popped up. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna tape that down. Let's do our big one as well. Hopefully we can do those both at the same time. So our teapot, again, same concept. We just want the top portion of our teapot to be over the top, okay? And I think this one will, this one will stay. And I even want the little um, spout to stay. So I'm gonna put it on like that. And cut it out. Okay, so now you have this cut out. And it opens into a card. So cute. So let's do our little teacup pick off the tear or the uh, washi tape a little bit later but there we go there's another one and then we got to do one more which is the big teapot on our coastal cabana uh oh my coastal cabana isn't big enough that's not good let's get a different one I have another piece here that I scored quickly and folded over. Let's see if this one will work. Yes, it will. Okay. Wouldn't these be cute for little swaps, little treats? I have all kinds of ideas with these, let me tell ya. Hi, Nancy. Thank you for watching. Okay, so then we have our last teapot here. Okay. So let's move our big shot out of the way and we can put these guys together. Okay, so we've got our teapot and our teacups. And I'm trying to peel that, there we go. That washi tape off. Okay, so then we are just going to Glue our, did I lose a teapot? I did cut one out of the blue, right? Oh, it's right here. Nope, I'm just my mind, losing my mind. Okay, so on the outside of our card, we are going to put adhesive all the way around because we want our designer series paper to stick 
down. I would not recommend putting it here because the top portion is not um, gonna be covered, so you don't want adhesive sticking out over that. So you're just going to center that, line it up with your cutout, and glue that to the top. Just like so, and then it opens like a card. So cute. And then I did a pink rose on the blue teapot, so I'm just gonna glue the pink rose down like so, right here to the corner. And then I have these little pearls. And I'm just going to put a pearl in the center of my rose. Look how cute that is. And then you can stamp whatever you want inside. It can be Happy Mother's Day. It can be Love is a Warm Cup of Tea. It can be You're Invited to a Tea Party. It can be anything that you want. You can even use these as gift tags and it can say to and from. So, so cute. So let's go ahead and finish those and then I'll show you how to build the box that they go in. Oh, look, I did what I told you guys not to do, which was put adhesive on the designer series paper. I can't even follow my own directions. But fortunately, the fold is so high up that I did not get adhesive over. So look how adorable that is. It is so great for Mother's Day. Absolutely, Heather. And I just put him here. Put a little pearl down at the bottom in the center of my flower. Boom, so cute. Okay, two more to go. And again, we'll just put adhesive all along the handle here and glue this down. And that's why I use liquid glue so you, you see I'm adjusting it, making sure that none of the pink is showing through. And I just love this designer series paper for a teapot. Isn't that so pretty? It's like perfect for a teapot. So cute. So I'm putting a little blue flower down and a little pearl. And then like Tammy said, put on some Wink of Stella and wow, it's gonna be awesome. Put some more adhesive down. Miss Potts, mom, yep. Exactly, I was telling them that this set reminds me of Miss Potts and Chip from Beauty and the Beast, which was my favorite Disney movie growing up, and I love that idea. They could be a Disney princess birthday party theme, and you can do Beauty and the Beast. That would be awesome. Okay, so then we're gonna put our little deformed flower because my projects aren't complete unless I have some sort of little deformity <laughs> and that's how you know it's from me because it's not perfect and there you go there is our four adorable little cards you could make a whole set of these you can you could do a set of eight a set of six they would fit in this box I'm about to show you here's the box again Again, I already threw in some chocolates too, um, and the lid just goes on perfectly, slides down, and you have this cute box. I even did a hole punch on the sides so that you would have an easy kind of lift. As you can see, I flipped these all over the place. Um, so you can easily lift them up. Goodness. Anyways. I don't know, I don't remember how they were sorted. I think like this. But um, this is such a cute little box. It could be a fun little gift. So here is how you do this. I'm gonna get my um, scoring board out. Excuse me, little teapots. Okay. So for the bottom, you're going to score at one inch all the way around. One, one, one and one. Now for the top piece, we're going to need to slide in just a bit, a thin pack of uh, post-its will do. You just need a sliver off of one. 
So we're gonna put that there and score at one. Score at one. And this allows the box, the lid to be just slightly bigger. And cover the top, okay? So. Now, to build our box, super simple. We're going to burnish our score lines real quick so we can see them better. Okay, and we're going to cut up the score lines to make these tabs that fold in. Okay, there and there. And then we're gonna do the same with the bottom. And these ones I actually wanna cut at an angle and then cut so that they fit better. Thank you, Barbara, I'm glad you like them. Okay, so now we're going to just build up our boxes. And again, I would recommend tear and tape or combo because you need it to be strong and stick for forever. Blue dots would also maybe work, but I'd stick to the strong stuff. The only downfall to liquid glue is that you have to wait a few seconds to let it dry. So you can see why I cut those at an angle. It's because it makes for a clean top. You don't have edges poking over. And you have the box base, okay? Now let's go ahead and do the same thing with our top. I did not cut these at an angle, but I'm gonna do that now. Blue dots are in back order too, oh no. That darn Chinese New Year. Our distributors from China and during the Chinese New Year that they celebrate for like a year and a half, <laughs> not a year and a half, but like a month feels like, puts everything in back order. It's insane. Stampin' Up! sales have been doing really well. The company is very strong and I like that. I like working for a company that I know I have a long and happy future in and Stampin' Up! brings me a lot of joy. So I am glad that their sales are so what doing so well. All right, so there is our lid. And I forgot to do that ahead of time, but it's okay. I'm gonna use my this is a three quarter inch circle punch. You could use a bigger one if you wanted, but I'm just gonna kind of shimmy this in here and do a whole punch on both sides or a circle punch on both sides, about half a circle, so that I have a little bit of a grip to grab the lid off of the box. There we go. Nice and snug cute little gift box. So fun. So there's your box. And like I said, it fits your um, cards in perfectly. Your little teapots fit just perfect in there with some chocolate or some tea bags. Um, this is like a little tea party in a box. How fun is that? Look at that. So cute. Oh, and that was the thing I wanted to show you. So here's your box, right? And I love that it has these little handles because you can take, well actually, let me show you both options. You can take one of their little cards 
happiness is paper, ink, and glue. Mom, you know that's true about me. You know my happy place is my craft room. I, even when I'm at work, think about crafting. Okay, so then, look at this little handle. You can slide your ribbon through. And this is what I was talking about. These would be perfect as a little gift tag. You can put it on top of your presents, on top of your box. It's just perfect. My bow's kind of wonky, but look at that. And then you can do the same thing over here. This one has chocolates in it. You can use the big pot or the little cup. But it's so cute. Let me cut this. Oh, she loves tea. Yes, Tammy, that would be a perfect gift then. I bet she would love this. All right, so then you just do your little bow. But look how, I mean, look, this was just a little box and then you put this cute tag, little tag on top and oh my gosh. I mean, I am just in love, you guys. These were so fun. I just wanna keep creating with these framelits. If you do not have these framelits, you need to get these framelits before May, March 31st. And maybe even a little bit sooner in case they go into back order or are unorderable. But they're so adorable. And these little teacups, you have to make these little teacups. And you have to say it with this high voice. <laughs> but yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's projects. Even if you're not tea drinkers, um, I think this would be a fun set for a little princess or for a loved one who loves tea, um, for a little tea party. Anyways, the, I the ideas are endless. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have fun with it. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a very creative, very happy um, week. Hopefully it's less snowy than mine. And if you remember, place an order, you can get my make and takes for free using my code going onto my online store. Bye guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a fabulous week.